Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about getting the operating system installed on an SD card uh, or a micro SD card for your Raspberry Pi. Uh, now, um, before I begin, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that you can buy uh, an SD card, micro SD card, uh, with the uh, operating system already installed, and you can do that very expensively. Uh, if you go to the Raspberry Pi site, um, uh, the Raspberry Pi is uh, a Great Britain, a UK site, uh, so a lot of the um, outlets that they point you to are, are located in the UK. We do have uh, at least one here in the United States, uh, Allied Electronics, uh, that sells them very inexpensively. You can also get these uh, on your favorite uh, online uh, distributor uh, and uh, uh, many times from uh, local distributors as well. So shop around. Uh, I happen to have found this one that sells one pre-configured for uh, eight bucks, a little over eight bucks. I'm not sure what the shipping runs, uh, uh, but to save on shipping, if you're going to be uh, buying a Raspberry Pi as well, you might think about combining the order. Uh, but uh, this is a pretty good deal. This is an eight gigabyte card. Uh, it comes in a, a micro uh, card with an adapter, so this will work both with the older uh, Raspberry Pis that use the full-size SD card. Uh, or the newer ones that use the uh, micro SD card. Uh, so this will get you going. Uh, why would you want to do your own? Uh, well, you may have several reasons. You may need to put a new operating system on there, recover a, a card that's been damaged, reformat it, uh, and so on. You may need a bigger card. You may, you may want to store video files or something uh, exceeds the capacity of this card, um, and so on. So you might have your own reasons, but uh, if you want to do this simply uh, without the fuss and bother, then this is certainly a, a one option. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to put your own operating system on uh, if that's the way you want to go. Uh, so if you want to do it yourself, it's uh, actually pretty easy. Uh, it used to be a lot more complicated, but uh, these days it's uh, rather simple. So uh, the first thing you're going to need, uh, I think, if you want to... Uh, uh, if you want to do it yourself, is is an SD card uh, or a micro SD card. Uh, that's going to look something like this. Uh, the way to go these days is to go ahead and get the micro SD card. Uh, they come with adapter. You, you can order the one with an adapter. It looks something like this. Minimum specifications are uh, 8 gigabytes uh, for the uh, software package that I'm going to recommend. Uh, you can get by with as little as four uh, if you burn an operating system directly on the card. Uh, I'm going to recommend um, uh, the the noob option, new out of the box software. Uh, it, it gives you a little bit more flexibility for that. You need a minimum of eight gigabytes, uh, and they recommend a minimum class four. Uh, but these days, that that's a pretty low low barrier. Uh, they're very inexpensive. This, this 8 gigabyte uh, card here with the adapter, class 10, uh, and the class has to do with uh, the rate of transfer, among other things, uh, is, is under $10. Uh, so you certainly want to go that way. That, that little uh, uh, micro SD card uh, fits in this adapter, and then this adapter uh, can plug into the older Pies, uh, or the, the micro SD card fits into the newer ones. Uh, this also, with the adapter, uh, will fit into your most most PCs and Macs these days come with a, a SD card slot uh, so that you can burn them uh, and copy the software to it. Uh, and then if you don't have one of those, um, uh, then um, uh, you can get an adapter. Uh, they look something like this. Bring up a picture of that adapter. Yeah, here we go. Uh, this is one example of one. Uh, the, where uh, you can fit either the SD card or the uh, uh, SD card adapter into it or the micro uh, SD card directly. This one uh, uh, is a USB. Uh, these are very inexpensive these days. You can find them locally or, or certainly your favorite online retailer. These also run uh, many different kinds under, under $10 these days. So uh, you need to get the SD card uh, and the uh, adapter so that you can uh, both format the SD card. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, transfer the software you need to it. So a couple of things you're going to need. Uh, you can uh, follow through uh, with the uh, Raspberry Pi site. It has great instructions. In fact, uh, everything I'm going to show you today is probably on this site somewhere, but I'm going to go ahead 
uh, and uh, run through it, uh, show you how it works. I'll show you on both PC and a couple of screenshots from the Mac as well. So we'll, we'll cover both the PC and the Mac. Uh, place to go is help. Uh, and they, they run through uh, quite a few, uh, uh, quite a few uh, uh, help guides. They've got a lot of videos. If, if I say something that's confusing, then uh, check it out here as well. Uh, where we want to go is the software guide. Uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, they cover what you'll need. They go over the hardware, uh, monitor the different cables, um, a, a lot of stuff I cover in my videos. Uh, you can check out the uh, uh, 8 gigabyte SD card. They talk a little bit more about the specifications if you want to check that out. But uh, just get that 8 gigabyte um, minimum class 4. Uh, but I'd, I'd go with a, the, the class 10. Uh, might as well get the faster, faster card. They're, they're so cheap these days. Uh, so let's go to uh, downloading and installing the Raspberry Pi software. This is what we're going to talk about uh, for the most part in this video. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on that link. Uh, they talk about uh, buying a pre-installed card. I just covered that. Um, uh, they, they give you a couple of UK sites, but there's plenty of places here in the United States you can buy those. Uh, now here's what I'm going to cover, uh, installing Raspbian with noobs. Raspbian is the kind of uh, Linux software. Uh, that you're going to install. Noobs is a particular packaging of that software. Stands for new out-of-the-box software. Uh, and uh, that's going to be the best place for you to start. Uh, what you're going to need uh, first is to format that card. Uh, so there's a, a website here you can go to uh, to download free formatting software. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to open this link in a new tab just to show you what that looks like. Uh, it's available for both Macintosh, the Mac, uh, and the Windows. Uh, they say up through Windows 8, but it works on Windows 10. I'm going to demonstrate it on Windows 10. Uh, they say up through Mountain Lion, but I, I've tried it on El Capitan. I'll show you a couple of screenshots. So it works on 10 and the latest version of the Mac software. Uh, if you go down here a little bit farther, a couple of links, download the SD formatter for Windows, download SD formatter for Mac. I'm not going to show you that. Um, just click on those links. Uh, uh, read, the, read the license agreement. It's, it's free stuff. Uh, you can get it in a couple of different languages here, uh, the, 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 the uh, user's manual, but it, it's simple stuff. Uh, and uh, just go ahead and get that installed uh, and then uh, run the software. Uh, and uh, I'll show you how that works here. Uh, so let's go ahead and fire that up. Uh, and I'll assume that you've got your, uh, uh, you got your SD card uh, and uh, you're ready to format. So let's see, where did I put that software? I'm going to show this to you in Windows, and then I'll show you a, a screenshot on the Mac. This is, this is what it looks like. And uh, here, here's a little tip. Um, I would start this software with your SD card not inserted, uh, just to make sure it does give you some messages about how you're going to erase stuff and, and things like that. Now, it's pretty good about finding the SD card, but if you're concerned or if you've got other cards or, or jump drives or, or whatever, uh, you want to make sure to pick the one. Uh, that's the one that you want to format. Uh, so you want to start with the, uh, uh, you want to start with a card out. Uh, and then after you've loaded the software, uh, then you can go ahead and insert the card, um, either using your, your uh, um, uh, adapter or, or in, the, in the slot, and then it will refresh, and, and it will then pick the new card that you just inserted. Uh, and then you can make sure that it's the one that you want, uh, and, uh, uh, and so on. And you can check and make sure that it's the capacity that you just installed. Now, I, I just inserted a 16 gigabyte card. Uh, the capacity that it shows is going to be less than that. Um, has to do with some overhead on the card. and. Uh, uh, the way that, that you calculate the size, so don't worry about that. Uh, if it's a new card, it's probably uh, got, it probably doesn't have any volume label. Um, if, if it's a card that you've used for something else, maybe you had an extra camera card or something laying around, you're going to use that. Uh, then um, uh, it may have a name there. You can write in a new, a new uh, label. You could call it MyPy or you could call it Noobs, which is the name of the software. We'll call it that. We'll call it noobs. And then we have some format options. So let me talk about those for just a second. If it's a new card, you can do a quick format. Uh, that's fine. Uh, you can also do full erase, uh, full overwrite. Um, 
if you do one of those, that, that could take a while if, if it's like a 16 gigabyte card here. Uh, and um, uh, that would go through and erase everything that's on the card or, or uh, overwrite it with, with blank stuff. Um, uh, it goes through and it actually does that for over 16 gigabytes. That could take, you know, 20 minutes maybe. Uh, but um, the other thing is, is format size adjustment, and, and it's usually, if you have that choice, it's a good idea to pick it uh, because the, the card may have been formatted to a smaller size and you want to make sure to get all the size you can out of it. So if you've got that option, uh, turn that on. Uh, we're just going to do a quick format for now. Now, let me show you what this looks like on the Mac. Um, I just did a screenshot. I don't think I, I probably need to do a demo, uh, but let me, let me pull that up here. Um, so on the Mac, it starts out like this. Um, again, you've got the quick format option or the overwrite option. And you've got the uh, option to resize here. Uh, you can type in the name uh, and then you can uh, go ahead and click format. Uh, if you choose the overwrite format, um, again, keep in mind that that's going to take some time. Uh, when you start this out, uh, the, this bar goes completely blue and it doesn't really seem to be doing anything. but uh, the override option, trust me, it'll take 10 to 20 minutes depending on the size of the card. So uh, after a while, you'll see the status bar, um, so give it some time. Uh, and uh, otherwise, it, it, everything happens the same on the Mac as it does on the PC, so I don't, I don't need to actually show it to you. Uh, let me close those out now. Uh, and then when I go ahead and click Format, um, uh, I'm just doing a quick format here, so this will just take a few seconds. I'm going to go ahead and click Format. Uh, it says data may be retrieved after quick format. That's true. Um, do you want to continue with quick format? If you choose the overwrite or erase, then the, the, if you add any data on the card, it's gone after that. So I'm going to click OK. It says don't remove it. Um, that, that's true. Um, uh, dry format complete is very fast on the quick format because it just makes some adjustments to the uh, what they call the uh, file table. Uh, you can read the read the information here and click OK. And uh, again, if it's, a, if it's a new card, that's probably OK. Um, it, if the card gives you some trouble and when you stick it in, in your uh, Raspberry Pi, then you might need to come back here and do a full format with, uh, uh, with either uh, overwrite or actually erase would probably be fine. Uh, anyway, so that takes care of the card. Now we can leave that card in here because uh, we're going to come back to it in a minute. Uh, and uh, uh, put some uh, put some information on there. Uh, so that takes care of formatting the card. Uh, now the next thing we need to do, uh, if we're following down the instructions here, uh, is to download the uh, noobs file and then drag and drop. So we're going to go here to the downloads page uh, and take a look at our options there. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do uh, with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, fascinating stuff. I assume if you're watching this video, uh, then you're probably uh, a beginner, uh, and so uh, you, you can take a look at this stuff, um, but uh, what you want to click on is this Noobs thing here, new out-of-the-box software. Uh, two options, a Noobs Lite, um, network install only, um, that, that's not what you want, you want this Noobs here. Two ways to get it, if you're familiar with BitTorrent software, uh, then you can, get, uh, you can get a torrent file, uh, and I'm not really going to explain that, if you know what it is, then you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but otherwise, you're wanting want to get this download zip. Now, I will tell you that this is over a gigabyte in size, so uh, that could take some time, depending on uh, depending on uh, uh, you know your your uh, internet connection. Uh, but a gigabyte's a pretty big file, uh, so you're going to want to give that some time. Um, I, I downloaded it here, uh, and when you get that uh, again on the Macintosh or the PC, you should just be able to double click that uh, and extract that. Uh, to a directory someplace. I, I would create a directory and then extract it to the directory. Uh, now once you extract it to the directory, you need to drag and drop it um, to the uh, drive that you just formatted. And, and you want to be sure to do that right because if, if you do it wrong, it won't work. Um, so let me show you the best way to do that. So here you can see I've created a directory called pi and a subdirectory called noobs. Uh, and I've extracted uh, the uh, contents of the zip file to this noobs directory. So here you can see all of the um, 
files that were in uh, the new zip file. And what we want to do uh, is we want to select all of those. Um, so I can um, uh, do it that way. Uh, I did a control A or you can do uh, however you want to do it. But you want to select all of those files. Here's the um, uh, um, SD card or the micro SD card that I created. And I just want to take all of those and I want to drag them uh, to this file. Now, uh, there's a bunch of them there, so this could take a few minutes, uh, a few minutes to complete. And I'll pause the recording here while those copy over. All right, so once again, I just copied all of these files and I dragged them over um, to, the, um, uh, to the SD drive. So when we look at this, we should be able to click on this drive and see all of those files. We shouldn't see a folder over here with those files in the folder. We should see all of those files uh, sitting there right in the root directory of that. Um, so now what we can do is we can uh, eject uh, uh, eject this. Okay, so now it's safe to remove the hardware. Now what we need to do is pull that out. Uh, and I can um, go back to, um, uh, let me close down the, there we go. Uh, so now we can go back to help. If we need help um, uh, with hooking this thing up, uh, you can go uh, hardware, software, uh, getting started with it, they show here all the all the different ways to plug it out, uh, plug things in. Uh, now I need to go back and, and stick that card in my Raspberry Pi. I can show you a couple of screens of what happens next. I can't really do one of my screen movies because uh, uh, at the point you're trying to configure this, I can't do screen capture software on the Raspberry Pi, but I can show you a couple of pictures of it. Uh, and when the thing first boots up, it's going to look something like this. Now this isn't... Um, uh, perhaps the greatest picture. Uh, but what you'll see is a boot screen, and it'll give you your choice of a few things to uh, uh, boot up. Uh, and the first one is this uh, Raspbian here, and this is the one that I'm going to suggest you uh, uh, install. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check uh, Raspbian. Uh, the other thing is this is going to default to uh, UK keyboard uh, and language, and you're probably going to want to change that um, if you're in the US. Um, to, to U.S. Uh, English and uh, U.S. keyboard. Uh, once you've got those choices made, uh, go ahead and click uh, install. Uh, the install is going to take uh, several minutes. Uh, and uh, then the next thing you're going to see as it's installing, uh, please wait while the system is installed and you'll see a status bar. And, uh, this could take 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, it will install the operating system that you chose, which if you chose what I recommend is the uh, Raspbian. Uh, and then, um, uh, then you'll see the um, uh, uh, OS is installed successfully. Uh, and then when you click OK, uh, this thing is going to uh, actually reboot. And the reboot is going to look something like this. Now, uh, they've changed this a little bit over the years. Uh, it used to be that you got dropped directly to a command line uh, now it's going to boot you into the, the graphical system directly. So uh, it's going to look a little bit like uh, uh, Windows or your Macintosh desktop when you load it. Uh, you can go straight to the uh, browser if you're hooked up to the Internet. Uh, it will try to configure the Internet automatically. Uh, it may take a few minutes to boot. It does a bunch of stuff now. Uh, so uh, at this point, um, go back to the Ubuntu help pages, uh, getting started. Uh, with add-ons troubleshooting, if you had some trouble, uh, you can go back and watch one, watch one of my other movies about what to do next, um, uh, and so on. Uh, but that's pretty much it for getting the operating system uh, loaded onto the SD card, uh, getting that uh, uh, inserted into the, uh, it goes right over here on the corner here, getting that uh, uh, set into the uh, Raspberry Pi, hooking up your Raspberry Pi, doing the first boot. Uh, and so thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Bye-bye.